Hey yo guys, welcome back. My name is HM and I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. So I'm editing this video that you're about to watch, and it's pretty, pretty early for me, I guess. It occurred to me about halfway through editing the video that I forgot to mention the most important thing that I want this video to be. And that is kind of like a bulletin board of people's, like, critiques and other stuff about Gen 3. So seriously, if you guys have any comments, any criticisms, any any constructive criticism about Bakugan Gen 3, please leave it below, because I want this to be a place that maybe somebody could see that from Spin Master that can maybe make some moves or take some community feedback to make the future of Bakugan better. But seriously, guys, I appreciate you for watching. Uh, it's been great. I know I've been taking a fairly long break from Bakugan, but we're trying to get back on the horse. I do still like Bakugan a lot, and I really do hope the best for this franchise. So, without any further ado, let's talk Bakugan. Hey, yo, guys. Welcome back. My name is HM, and I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. It's been a while. I haven't made a lot of content here lately on Bakugan because things are interesting. And uh, it's spring. It's pretty nice out. I'm, I like to get out around this time, so I'm kind of just taking a break from YouTube, doing my thing. But I wanted to talk about Gen 3. Gen 3 is in a really interesting boat because I like some of the stuff it does, but I aggressively dislike some of the other stuff it does. But in this video, I wanted to talk about the things that it did right and the things that didn't quite hit the mark. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so first things first. I want to talk about the packaging. Going to the toy aisle and actually seeing these, honestly, is really cool. They're very small, very compact, and they look super clean. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on with, like, huge artwork like the old Generation 2 Bakugan did, but I do really like the size of these and how much they could probably ship out. Uh, if the only reason they're not opened is because there's not really a reason to open them, but <laughs> I will say that they did an absolutely fantastic job with the Street Brawl stuff. And this one, you go to the toy aisle and you see it and you're like, wow, this looks really cool. And I'll get some better close-up pictures of these. These are just super awesome. And I will say, as a person looking from the outside, looking to get into Bakugan, this would certainly make me interested. But I would hope that there was a card game for something to go with them. There is, but it's not the most crazy in-depth thing. Um, but yeah, I don't want to turn this into something that it's not. I want to talk about the things I do like, and I do like the packaging a lot. And I hope that the packaging, wherever we go, continues to be this cool, because they are very small, very compact, and I think this is what Spin Master wanted to go for, was something that was more space efficient, that could kind of, like, stack on top of each other very easy in a box. And not to mention, they just look cool. To, they're pretty cool display pieces. Here... God, I've been digging around for Galactic Milius for like 10 minutes! Where the heck is Galactic Milius? Where did it go? God, I just wanted to make a video on the things I like about Gen 3, and I didn't get everything prepared beforehand because I thought it would be easy. What did you do with him? <laughs> what the? Aha! Okay, whoo! That took way longer than I thought it was going to. Okay, <laughs> that was supposed to be an easy transition, but the next thing I want to talk about is the special treatments for Gen 3. Now, I think I talked about this a little bit in the past. I really enjoyed some of the ideas that Gen 3 had with the Street Brawl stuff and the Galactics. I think the Galactics are really cool. So, I'll get some close-up shots of these, but the Street Brawl Bakugan Specifically, this bruiser is almost colored exactly like OG Subterra from Bakugan Gen 1. And we love Gen 1 in this household. So, more of that would be awesome. And then we've got Galactics, which is like a totally new thing, where they have this really cool metallic iridescent faction symbol and this really awesome metallic purple. I think they're super cool. I would go after more of them if, you know, there was a reason to. But, 
the other one that came back is diamonds, and I will say, I don't mind diamonds not being that rare. If I see a thing, I just want to buy the thing and not have it be three times the price. So, having diamonds is still really cool. They are a little abundant, but I don't mind that personally. And then, yeah, with Street Brawl stuff, we have, like, these really, really cool colors. And these different, these different ideas were just super awesome. And I really do enjoy, like, the graffiti and the spray paint. And it adds a really cool character to these specific ones. They're almost worth going out of the way for just because of the way they look. So I think the special treatment department for Bakugan Gen 3 was really good. Uh, Gen 2's was also really good. It was, um, it felt like it was missing a couple things, but overall, Gen 3 kind of feels like it's missing things from Gen 2, so everything kind of comes full circle. Okay, so I'm going to loosely talk about the designs of the Bakugan as well. I think the special attacks all have really great Bakugan designs. But the cores, I'm not feeling them as much. They're relatively simple, and they don't look the greatest, in my opinion. There are a couple that are pretty good, but I don't know. Something about them having a bottom half that is removable, and you can interchange them, is a cool idea. But it takes away a lot of the design choices, and some of them outright just don't make sense. You throw... Uh, let's see, Bruiser's legs on, like, an aquatic creature, and it just looks horrendous. <laughs> but then in other cases, sometimes you throw other parts of other Bakugan onto each other, and they look great. So, it is a double-edged sword. It can go either way. Some look good, some look bad. But the special attack Bakugan do retain a really good, unique design. And they spin, which is a novelty, but I don't think it should have been the main focus of the series, being... Bakugan or Baku Blades, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so I've been sitting here for like five minutes trying to think about things that I like about Gen 3, and we came up with three. That's about it. Um, <laughs> I want to try and stay as neutral as I can here. So we're gonna make a neutral category, and then we'll do the bads. So the things I don't really mind, I don't mind the spinning gimmick. Of special attacks. I mean, it's cool. I do not think the whole series for Gen 3 needed to be designed around this. And that also leads into my other complaint, where the arena is fine. I just don't think Gen 3 needed a reboot, or Bakugan needed a reboot. It really didn't. And the gameplay kind of shows. When you go ahead and take away the biggest thing away from Bakugan, which is rolling them, and you require an arena to be played, you are not playing this without an arena. You can't change my mind on that. <laughs> the arena is a fun gimmick. You let them go, they spin around, they hit each other, and then they open. And that is a novelty. I feel like it should have stayed, like, maybe even a sideline. You could have made Street Brawl? You could have made the Street Brawl Bakugan just another side inside of Bakugan Gen 2. And I, I feel like people would have eaten it up more. You'd still have people that are around playing the TCG. I like to play the TCG, but I haven't played it in a while because I just don't... For one, setting up the recording stuff is always a pain in the butt. But, I don't know. I very much enjoy Gen 2, and I don't mind Gen 3 as much. And even when we're taking, like, the entirety of Gen 3 into consideration, even the show, I don't think the show is bad. I just... I don't know. It's hard for me to convey what I think about it, because I want a more mature show, in all honesty. It feels like Bakugan was always this thing that was trying to chase its legacy fans. And they did a great job with Gen 2. Um, the show was... Same deal, it wasn't very mature, it was for kids. It was obviously for kids, these are targeted towards children, but there is a side of people that know, that made Bakugan Gen 2, that know that those legacy fans are going to want something deeper and something more involved, and I think Gen 2 did it great. Gen 3 has not done any of that for me. There are Gen 2 references, and... I don't know, I just don't want to forget about Gen 1. I've been appreciating Gen 1 a lot more here recently, and I'm not I don't I'm not invested enough to buy Gen 1 Bakugan at the moment, but 
I do really enjoy the legacy of the series, and I do think it should go noticed and not unnoticed. So, with that in mind, let's get into the bad. So, first things first. Time to get a little negative. It was bound to happen when we're talking about Gen 3. So, the cards. I see what they were going for, and I don't particularly dislike the design of the cards, them being like split into two and you can interchange pieces. I think that's neat, and I actually do think that that could have turned into something pretty cool. Had it been designed, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain how I feel about it because the cards are just so small that they don't particularly fit into a sleeve properly, not that they need to, but when you cut the card in half, you cut the artwork in half. And granted, I will be honest, the normal Bakugan TCG cards also have like half portraits because half of the card is artwork and the other half, it's more like, eh, you know what, it's kind of a half if you consider like the name of the Bakugan and the text at the bottom a whole half and then the artwork is the other half. Yeah, it's about half and half. So I guess I can't really be too upset there. I do feel like there are things that get in the way of the artwork on the new cards, like the stat bar. And uh, yeah, there's just some things that don't, I don't, I don't know. It's really hard for me to explain the cards because I do, I just like the cards. I mean, they look good. The only other thing that really gets me about the cards is it feels like they tried really hard to simplify things by having these symbols. And they did this in Gen 2. And the symbols left a lot of people scratching their heads for the most part. Or they made, like, terms and sentences, like, a full symbol, and nobody knew what they meant until they got clarification. Some of them were pretty self-explanatory, like a reroll, uh, a V for Victor, even though I say that's obvious, but I think my friend has asked me how, uh, how that works or what that is so many times. So, a symbol isn't going to make everything simple. With this card game, sorry, I'm like, I'm at a loss for words trying to explain this. These three bars here, you can kind of infer that one of them's power, one of them's speed, and then whatever the blue one is. <laughs> There's just a disconnect on what you should be going for. It's like B power is the thing that wins you a match in Gen 2 and in Gen 1. Sometimes you can flip this, uh, the victor condition to be damage. So, I don't know, it feels like some Bakugan are just doomed to fail in this format. And I guess that's fine. Gen 2 had a lot of stuff that was like that too, where you just want that one you really like to be good. But they're just not going to, because their B-Power is low, or their damage is low, or something or another. This doesn't take into consideration how good a Bakugan rolls and opens. Because in Gen 2, there's double coring. And there's also just like weight distribution when you roll them. Are they bottom heavy? Are they top heavy? With Bakugan Gen 3, you pull a ripcord and you pray to God that it opens on something you need. Otherwise, eh, good luck, bud. Okay, but anyway, I do like the way the cards look. The, the gear system on them is a little confusing as well. There's just a lot of symbols. And there's also a lot of misprints. I know that they wanted to take away text from a lot of these, from what it seems. And some of the cards that I've seen lately in people's unboxings from the new Street Brawl stuff, they just don't make sense. Like, and some of these things on here are just so confusing, and I just don't know how to feel about... Is somebody mowing right now? And here I thought it'd be easy to make a video. Anyway, what was I talking about? Okay, so I talked about the arena, and I talked about the cards. Uh, the, at least the way the cards are shaped and how they're built when it comes to stats. The other thing I want to talk about is just the general gameplay of Gen 3. There's not really much there except just ripping the Bakugan's ripcord and just watching it go and land on a card. Uh, one of the Metal Gate cards, they're sectioned into, like, terrain, which I think is actually kind of cool. It's a cool throwback. In a sense, um, I like that they're actually, like, zones, 
And I think they could have done something pretty cool with that if they wanted to make another format of Bakugan, similar to how they did in Gen 2, where they have the traditional core format, and then they went back to the gate format. So I think they, there was something that could have been done there. Uh, the other thing that is really obnoxious, at least to me, is how the cards are played. And it also feels like they are kind of built around like the legacy format, where you have three ability cards. I think it's th one of each color? I can't remember. I don't remember how to play the original. But um, the amount you get to play the cards is very, very limited, and you have, I think you don't have a choice on which ones you actually play. I think they're, I think they're like shuffled. I think it's like three, maybe six. Can't remember. Probably should have did some research, but that goes to show how little I actually know and care about the Gen 3 game. Uh, you, you pretty much just like, you decide to flip a card and it gives you a specific set of bonuses. So literally everything about Gen 3 is random. The only choice you have is what gate cards you bring, what ability cards you bring, and what Bakugan you bring. Uh, it's a very, very weird design philosophy, and I could kind of get why they maybe wanted to just make it... See, I can't even say that because, oh, the way that they did this it did not make it more simple. It makes it... Man, why does this always happen to me? It seems like anytime I try to make videos, somebody's outside mowing or banging around, making a bunch of noise, and I'm just trying to make videos. What can I do to get revenge? Maybe I'll mow my lawn at four in the morning on a Sunday. Yeah, that'll show them. Okay, we're gonna get through this. Anyway, the randomness doesn't make the game more simple. It makes it more confusing and it's a little off-putting when you look at everything and there's these symbols and all these like bars with very little explanation. Like I think the rule book will explain how you win, but I don't know, the symbols to me are just very, very convoluted compared to what they are in Gen 2. You pretty much get a number in Gen 2, whoever's got the highest number, uh, it wins. It's not three separate numbers. And then you don't have, you have like things that can boost them in your deck. And it is just super nice that the TCG can allow, the Gen 2 TCG can allow you to play things that aren't specifically super good and well designed if you have the right deck for it and you can roll. So there is a lot of stuff that goes into Gen 2 and why I like it so much. And it is really interesting reflecting back on Gen 3 now because I bring up all of this stuff because there are whispers of Gen 3 being done. And honestly, I ugh, it's such a hard thing for me to pitch in on because I don't want Gen 3 to just be gone. I want, I should say, I don't, hmm, I need to think about how I want to say this, because I don't, I'm not particularly attached to Gen 3. I am very attached to Bakugan, and I want Bakugan to be back and healthy, at least to the degree that Gen 2 was. Gen 2 was super, super healthy when it launched, and after a couple months, there were so many people talking about Bakugan and playing it, and things just did not pan out the way that they should have because things weren't handled well and I just don't know what else to say other than it could have been something great and it just never turned into it. Uh, I went to conventions, I know people that went to conventions that were officially hosted by Spin Master and they were great, they were a lot of fun, a lot of people were playing Bakugan and trying it out for the first time and it was just, it's simple, it's so simple and it's, it's a good kind of simple, it's got a hook. It's not a ripcord and you pull it and you watch a thing happen. You can learn very easily what makes Bakugan easy to play. You roll a Bakugan, it opens, it's got a stack. You have cards in your hand. You play card until B power is the highest. You win. <laughs> or you block a roll, like something as simple as that. This has so many layers of what is going on. It's like, okay, you've got three sets. You got blue, green, and red. It's pretty straightforward. The highest one wins, right? But you don't have any control over which one you will be using that match. And it can add some, like, random variance. 
on what you're doing, but what if your, let's say your blue Bakugan, your, uh, your blue stat Bakugan is like 500, and then it has a 100 red stat. Well, sorry, you landed on red. Good luck, buddy. So, and then you could argue like, then put a red gear on it. But then it's like, I, why would I spec into the thing that's weaker when I should just make the thing that's good excel at it? That's what you could do in Gen 2. High B power? Crank that B power. High damage? Let's make damage victor a thing. You know, stuff like that. It's very straightforward in Gen 2 of what you want to do with the Bakugan. I still don't know what I want to do with Gen 3 Bakugan when it comes to the TCG. I shouldn't even call it a, C a TCG because there's not... That's another thing. You can't get the cards in Gen 3 unless you buy the products. And as of right now, I have no reason to buy more because I'm not playing it. I'm not excited for what's inside of the packages. I do, again, think... The treatments are really cool, but it's not making me bend over backwards saying, I need this. Like, I'm not going to see this thing. I haven't pulled these out of a drawer in... since I unboxed them, and that's been... that's almost been a year ago now, guys. That's crazy to think about. So, well, I think the initial hype for them was... well, it wasn't great, but it was cool. It was neat that we were getting something new and different. I'm ready to go back to what we had in Gen 2, and I'm ready for I'm ready for some change. And I'm hoping within the next couple of weeks, there's going to be some pretty cool things that happen or get announced, or just general stuff that is going to change the future of Bakugan, and hopefully for the better. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm hoping they don't stay silent on it, because... Something needs to change soon, otherwise Bakugan is a sinking ship. And right now, we're like Titanic level. Like, we're about, we're about halfway, that ship is about to split in half, so... Anyway guys, that's gonna do it for me. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. I know it was kind of pieced together funny, I wanted it to be a little funnier this time. Heh! <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about some stuff, because I know that there have been rumors of everything being stopped. Like, no more toy production no more show, like, everything is just stopping, and we were kind of reaffirmed a while ago that this was a green, what's it called? Um, an evergreen series, which means that it's not going anywhere, so, I guess we'll see. Anyway, guys. <laughs>